Hi friends, welcome into the Leadership Sandbox where we are going over a seven minute strategy real quick and in a hurry. So I'm gonna be rapid firing uh, this topic to you today because I wanna make sure that you have fresh content and I wanna make sure that it's something that you can implement immediately. And I wanna talk to you in seven minutes about stopping disruptive behaviors now and building trust with your team. How do you do that? Well, let's start by taking a walk through the office. Here's what I want you to do, friend. I want you to sit back and I want you to close your eyes. Unless you're driving and listen to that, please keep your eyes open. But I want you to listen in, lean in and visualize the people in your office. Visualize the people that are sitting around the boardroom table with you. And I want you to think about who's your eye roller? Can you name them? Who's the one that's the silent saboteur? Can you name them? How about the constant interrupter? You know, the one that doesn't allow a complete thought or sentence from anybody else to get done because they want to interrupt and they want to interject. What about the naysayer, the negative Nelly, the doom and gloom, the sky is falling, right? Who's that person? Can you name them? Because I know usually within the first 10 minutes of being with the team, I can go through and name the different behaviors and personalities that are in the room. I can understand it What? because I see their behaviors. They don't hide. They don't hide when guests are in the room. They're open and blatant with these behaviors, but here's what these behaviors do. They're impacting your team's ability to be successful, to be cohesive. They're also probably impacting the people's trust in you because you as the leader are allowing these behaviors. You're not confronting the disruptive behaviors and not stopping it cold in its tracks. And that impacts the team's trust in you. So it's time for you to buckle up and let's, let's get to work buttercup because this canceling out these negative behaviors or these disruptive behaviors, it's not for the faint hearted. It's actually something that's for leaders that want to step up to that next level. And I think that's you. So let's go. What's the, what's the first thing we got to do? Well, we got to get to the core of the disruption. You got to name the behavior, confront the behavior, be upfront with the behavior, understand that we don't want to do that publicly, but what we want to do is actually pull the person aside who's being the negative Nelly all the time or the constant interrupter and let them know what you've noticed in their behavior and ask them to reframe it. Help them understand what that looks like. Paint the picture. Get the box of 64 crayons out if you need to and draw them the picture. So they see what the new behavior looks like. And then when they're doing it, celebrate it and celebrate that publicly. Hey, nice job, Joe. I noticed that you've been really intently listening to your colleagues in this meeting. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that. I'm going to do that publicly so he hears it, but also because that mean, that tells the team, because remember your team's not in the one-on-one -on -one conversation you're having to change the behavior. Your team's in the ones where we acknowledge the positive change that we're seeing. That's going to be important. Okay. So you want to make sure they know. So you're, uh, you're emphasizing you as leader taking charge to eradicate these disruptive believers, believers, disruptive behaviors. So if you are a leader like many that avoids direct confrontation, because you think that it's going to create tension and you don't want more tension because the other disruptive behaviors are already creating enough tension, stop that thinking, stop it now. You are leading the team, lead your team to make the change that you say you want them to make. It's not about being the bad guy. It's not about being too direct. It's about changing the behavior. That's what causes your other people to respect you on the team to say he's he or she, you are a leader that takes charge. They want that. One of the other reasons that these behaviors get in our way and we don't stop them immediately is that oftentimes leaders have a fear of losing control of the conversation. Like if you are fearing stopping a behavior and it's going to, or confronting a behavior because it's going to take the confrontation down a negative or the conversation down a negative path, stop that, forget it, confront it and allow people, you guys get two minutes to talk about it. That's fine. But here's the new behavior or better yet, take them to the wall on the flip chart and have them set up what they want the ground rules to look like for their meetings and for the conversations so that they're helping you build the why behind the behaviors that we're wanting to change. Because I believe that oftentimes these disruptive behaviors are masking deeper issues. And when you seek to understand and you're willing to have that conversation or with the team willing to have that conversation, man, it's a game changer. Every way you slice it or dice it, it's a game changer. And it actually helps people to foster and build trust with you. So stop avoiding it. Just have the conversation and then hold the line, hold the line on the accountability of what we agree to. This isn't a negotiation. When we make that list of ground rules on the wall and we have it in our meeting, guess what? 
in my leadership sandbox world, we follow that and we honor that. And we as a team at the table get to help hold everyone accountable to that. Why is that important? Because that means everybody's in it together. It's not just on you, right? Listen, you want to set that expectation of what you want that change to look like, write it down, have it listed out. Before your meeting starts, you go over the ground rules with everybody and boom, bada bing, you've got change. You've got people honoring the rules. And when they start to, I had a team do this. They set the ground rules of what their meetings were going to do because the disruptive behaviors were just a overflowing. And then the other team members were able to say, hold on a minute, Sandra. I noticed that on the list of ground rules, not interrupting everybody is number three on that list. I'd like for us all to please honor that. Now that's not you as the leader. Somebody else gets to come forward and say that. Okay. I got to hurry. I got just another minute left. I want to get through. We want you to close the gap right? What does that mean? When you bring in the team to let the team know we've got these ground rules, we're not allowing these behaviors. You don't have to name who has the behavior. Everybody knows who your naysayer is, your negative Nelly. Everybody knows who your eye roller is. They know who, you know, sits there on their self, their six inch device um, uh, in meetings. They know that, right? So the transparency piece is you saying these are the behaviors we're changing too right? That's how you start to change those disruptive behaviors and get everybody aligned. But it starts with Y-O-U. You are the one to take charge and start it today. Bring in your team so they hear what the change is. You write it out on the wall. You get them involved in that ground rules list. It's going to be a game changer. And it shows that leadership through your action isn't just words right? It's not just words. It's something that your team is going to build trust in because they see that you are a leader. They can trust because you take action to change behaviors that are no longer serving us in the workplace. Thanks for joining me for the seven minute strategy today on transforming those disruptive behaviors now in the workplace. I tell you, we got a lot of work to do, but let's get to it. I'll see you next time in the sandbox. Make it a great day. Yeah.